Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to look at in this video or talk about is some Synology alternatives. So Synology has obviously made some choices and I see a lot of people talking about migrating away from Synology. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at some alternatives that are not doing hard drive lock-in they're not doing those kinds of things and i actually have some of these available and you're going to let me know at the end of this video or down in the comments what NASs you want to see me create more content on so what i did was i created this spreadsheet and it's called Syn synology alternatives and across the top i have uh, functionality could be apps, could be built into the operating system. And then over here, we have our manufacturers. So let's start with Synology, because a lot of the stuff that Synology does, love them or hate them, they're kind of like Microsoft, right? Nobody does Exchange Server better than Microsoft. Nobody does an Office Suite better than Microsoft, right? But you know what comes along with Microsoft. So you either put up with that or use alternatives. And really, when you look at Microsoft Excel, <laughs> the uh, depending on what you're doing as far as uh, functionality goes, there's not even a real close competitor. If I'm wrong about that, let me know down below. And if at any time we're talking about any of these and I didn't get it right, let me know down below because I want to make sure that this information is correct. I spent a couple days browsing through the documentation. I don't have enough hard drives to spin up all these boxes and do full, uh, do like full RAID arrays. So what I may do, depending on what you all tell me down in the comments, is I may stick one drive or two drives in each and fire them all up. And then we can spend some time going through absolutely everything except for disk redundancy and things like that. So let's start with Synology. And I, I selected some of the more popular things, things that we support, things that other people are doing. So first of all, uh, Synology can actually become a domain controller for your Windows computers. It's it's Synology directory server. It's not a third-party app. It's their app, and it works really well. It can also be an LDAP. It, it, let me back that up. It can also be an LDAP server and a Radius server. It can be an LDAP or an Active Directory member. They have their own collaboration suite, which is Synology Office, and you can pair that with chat, drive, calendar, and contacts. And you basically, it's like somebody took like Google and like packaged it up and put it on the Synology. A lot of people are using it. It's very popular. It's very easy to use. It's secure. It's a fantastic piece of software. Synology can also become an email server, and we are seeing this on the uptick, especially with that looming date of October 25th, 2025, in which if you have an on-prem exchange server, you're now paying software assurance and recurring licensing fees. You can't own it anymore. People are switching to the Synology email server, and that is a Synology app. You can do uh, secure file sharing with people either internally or externally. You can connect to it with SMB. You can set it up as an iSCSI target. You can use NFS. You can run Docker apps on it. CMS is central management system. And Synology does have that nice central management system where you can tie all of your Synologies together, manage all of the packages, all of the DSM right from one place without having to touch each NAS. Uh, surveillance server. So obviously surveillance station has been a big part of the Synology ecosystem. And they do have that. And it also has its own CMS for the uh, surveillance server because you can manage multiple NVRs, all the permissions from one place. It's really well done. Uh, backup solution. Synology has a backup solution that can do Windows servers, VMs, all those things. Can you run the hardware in high availability? Synology does provide that. So you have two units. If one fails, the other one takes over automatically. Uh, photo server app. Synology has that. You can run virtual machines on Synology. You can create a VPN server on Synology. You can run a web server and you can have a media server, whether that's Plex, Jellyfin, or Synology even has their own. 
Now, as we go through these, you're going to see, and uh, WonderTech did a video kind of like this, and I'm going to echo some of the things that he said when we get down to Ubiquity. But next on the list is QNAP. And QNAP can become a domain controller. It can also be a member. They don't provide their own collaboration suite, and it's not necessarily a full collaboration suite, but they do support Mattermost and NoteStation 3. And you can probably run something in a Docker container, such as own cloud, next cloud, only office. They put, uh, support an email server. Once again, it's not their own app. It is the Zeems. I'm not really familiar with that, but I think I'm going to get familiar with that. You can do secure file sharing, whether it's somebody internal or creating those external links. Supports SMB, iSCSI, NFS, Docker. They do have a central management station for QNAP, so you can manage all of your QNAPs from one place. They do have their own surveillance software. They provide a comprehensive and robust backup solution. Their high availability is entering beta or is enter beta. They do have a photo server. You can run vo uh, virtual machines. You can have a VPN server, a web server, and a media server. So the one thing that you know people rag on QNAP about is their security. And a lot of the times, I'm mean, just going to say it, QNAP has addressed those security concerns, but it's people who don't update their firmware regularly or they expose these devices unnecessarily to the internet there's a combination of problems there are some problems qnap hasn't addressed in a timely fashion so you can't point it all to qnap there is a little bit of, of blame on both sides of the equation there terramaster cannot be a domain controller i'm I'm saying that because they don't have a native app for that, but if you wanted to jerry-rig something in a Docker container, I'm sure you could, but I, I'm not going to sell that solution. Uh, can be uh, an LDAP or an Active Directory member. They do have a file sync solution. That's what they are considering their collaboration suite. It's not as comprehensive as anything else that we're looking at on the list, but they are developing it and they are getting there. Uh, TerraMaster does have an email server that you can run. You can share files securely internally or externally uh, using links like we're used to. SMB, iSCSI, NFS, Docker runs. They do not have a centralized management server. They do have surveillance software. It's not as robust as some of the offerings from QNAP or Synology. They do provide a backup solution, not as comprehensive as QNAP or Synology. No high, no high availability that I could find. If I'm wrong about that, let me know down below. They do have a photo server, so you can back up all of your photos, uh, de-Google your life or whatever it is you want to do. They do have virtual machines. You can run virtual machines on the hardware. They have a VPN server. You can run a web server in Docker, and they do support uh, media server. Next one on the list is Ace, Ace Store. They do not have a domain controller that is native. Once again, you could probably rig something up, but it can be an LDAP or an Active Directory member. The collaboration suites that they offer, own cloud, next cloud, or only office, that's right under their apps that you can install. It's not their apps, but they do have apps for it. Asa Store does have an email, excuse me, email server available. You can do secure file sharing using links. Um, internally or externally. Supports SMB, iSCSI, NFS, Docker. Uh, Asus Store does have a central management server for the NASAs, so if you're in that ecosystem, you can uh, have a central place to manage all of those devices. They also have their own surveillance software, a backup solution, no high availability. They do have their own photo app, photo software. You can run virtual machines, a VPN server, a web server, and a media server all on the ASA store. The next one that we're looking at is Ugreen. Cannot be a domain controller natively. Like I said, you can probably rig something up in a Docker, a Docker container, but it can be an LDAP or an Active Directory member. They do uh, claim to have a collaboration suite. I need to get that installed and see what it is, but when you look at the the applications they say are available, they do have it. They do not have an email server. Once again, you could probably rig something up in a Docker container. I don't necessarily recommend that unless that's how you want to manage it. That's that's on you. That's probably something we would not offer here. Um, 
just because then you get into is it open source is it licensed who provides the support for it is it supported in a docker container all kinds of things right we're looking for for easy uh easy to manage something where you don't always have to call us right we're empowering the users with Ugreen, you can do the secure file sharing with a link internally or externally supports smb i could not find that it supports iSCSI. if i'm wrong about that let me know down below supports nfs docker no central management for all of your Ugreen devices yet. No surveillance software that I found. If I'm wrong about that, let me know down below. They do provide a backup solution. No high availability. And remember when I said high availability, I'm talking about two servers. If one goes offline, the other one picks up. I'm not talking about availability as far as disks go. All of these have comprehensive RAID support, but RAID is not necessarily high availability for the device. It's high availability for the disks, depending on how you cut it up. They do have their own photo app, photo server. You can run virtual machines, and you can run a VPN server and a web server in Docker, but it does support a media server. And most of the time, what you're seeing for media servers is if these NAS manufacturers don't have their own um, app, a lot of it's Jellyfin, Plex, name another popular one it's probably there now the reason that ubiquity is on this list is because out of all of these devices and i'm not just saying this because i have a relationship with ubiquity or that i've been ubiqu using ubiquity for a long time but ubiquity came into it and they did they said we're going to create a nas and they have created from the web interface to the way things are shared <clears throat> i'll recover this here in just a second it's dead simple. It just works. So uh, it cannot be a domain controller. Now, if you use Unify Identity, you can actually join the NAS to uh, Active Directory. There's a lot of other moving pieces that have to happen for that to work successfully and work um, se seamlessly, but it, it is an option. It does not run a collaboration suite, no email server, but that secure file sharing that I'm talking about, if you want a sample of that, let me know. Reach out to me either on my community or by email or fill out our contact form, and I will share a Linux ISO with you, and I'll do it on the Synology UNAS Pro, and the interface is beautiful. It takes me like two clicks to do it, it is, it's a fantastic piece of software. And, and I really hope they don't stray too far because for what it does, it does a really good job. Yes, there's some things that are kind of rough around the edges. They've been addressing those in firmware updates. And I don't know where we're going to be at in a year, but I would rather have them keep this thing beautiful, keep it running fast um, instead of kind of bloating it with, with apps that we don't really need or that we can run on other devices does support uh, SMB, no iSCSI, no uh, NFS, no Docker. Now, I did mark for the Ubiquiti UNAS Pro CMS because if you have a bunch of these, if you go to the unify.ui.com portal, you can manage them all from that one place. Now, that doesn't mean that we can launch updates on all of them like we can with some of these other CMSs, but it is a central place to see all of your devices and get a snapshot about what is going on with your Ubiquiti UNAS Pro. It does not provide surveillance software, but it can be a backup target for your Unify Protect. It does provide a backup solution for Time Machine, and if you have clients you can uh, on your devices, you can back up to the shares that are on there. No HA that I know of yet. No photo server, VM, VPN, web server, or media server. So as people are looking at kind of like, where am I going if I'm so disenfranchised with Synology and their decisions that I need to move on, right? What's what's next? I've, I've given you a list here. Now, the reason that I created this list the way that I did is because these are all pre-made boxes. All you do is insert the hard drives. You don't have to roll your own software. Now I'm going to tell you, if you're not happy with QNAP or with Ugreen, you can actually install other open source NAS distributions on that hardware. I don't know if you can do it with TerraMaster or Asus Store. You definitely, Synology's got it on lockdown. 
but definitely QNAP and Ugreen, you can install other operating systems on that hardware if you're not happy with it. But these were selected because they are uh, their own boxes from their own brand and they are alternatives to, to Synology. So we could get into another list of a half a dozen Linux distros to roll your own NAS on your own, your own hardware. And it would be, the features would be a little different than this. So, like I said, these are boxes. You can go on Amazon right now or to the manufacturer, order them, stick hard drives in and go. So that was kind of the point of looking at these alternatives. I'm not, you know, I, I, I get it from both sides of the equation with Synology, the thing is, Synology does some things really well, like their email server. Uh, I challenge you to find another NAS manufacturer that has an email server that's as comprehensive and as inexpensive as the Mail Plus server. And it's, it's a beautiful piece of software. And we have a lot of clients that are running it. Their collaboration suite, right? So there's a lot of pluses. And if you're in that world... Uh, you're probably not going to mind the hard drive lock-in. But if you're avoiding this hard drive lock-in and, you're, and you know, the manufacturer doesn't really matter to you, you have choices. You have all kinds of choices. Now, you, may, you back up your data from your Synology. You, you know, stick your drives in a new piece of hardware and then move everything back over. Things are going to be different. The software is going to be different. It's not going to look the same. There'll be a little bit of a learning curve right? To figure out how these manufacturers are doing the same things, but you do have alternatives. You're not necessarily stuck with Synology. So if I messed any of this up or it's not accurate based on the information that I found, let me know down below. Do you want me to just clear my table off back here, put all these NASs on there with just one or two drives each, and we'll just do a showdown video. Let me know if you want to see that. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, share, follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below along with affiliate links, a Patreon link. And if you need IT consulting, whether it is migrating away from Synology, spinning something up on Synology, working with any NAS system or any SAN, if it's voice over IP, security, wired or wireless networking, all those things, head on over to willyhow.com, fill out the contact form that's on the front page and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Come on over to community.willyhow.com and join the conversation or start a new thread about this. So once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.